But how tragic that the figures have gone up so enormously, because yeah. I really believed, and perhaps I was fooling myself, but that we were just becoming more and more tolerant, yeah. um, and the young, younger generation were becoming more tolerant More well. enlightened. More enlightened, more familiar with, uh, you know, multicultural. You know, I'm, I am much older and sort of... You know, it was, but now children have got, it's, and we are, I thought we were all colour blind now. Mm. Um, and not just colour, but it's all the other things that go with it. It's sort of uh, different cultures and so on and so on. So um, uh, I don't think you can really do enough. I just think it's too much. And I'm, I'm really saddened to hear that the figures are going up and up and up when they should almost generally across society just be going down almost automatically without police intervention. Well, well you, know, you know the mantra, don't you, Andrea? Police the streets, not the tweets. That's, that's absolutely it. And if what we've, this is actually people are reporting because they feel offended by something that someone has said. Now, real crime is there are, there are laws which make crimes and for which you can be prosecuted. So if someone is violent to you, if someone steals your phone, burgles your house, these are real, these are real crimes that can be properly prosecuted. If someone incites, hate, incites hatred, incites violence, then there are codes, there are laws which can be appropriately uh, prosecuted. What we have here is a situation whereby people say, I have been offended. So last week, I spent two days in court with street preachers where a, it was known that a crowd had assembled around the street preaching. They had accused the street preacher of being homophobic. He would say, I was preaching for the Bible out of love. Yeah. They say, I felt offended as a result of that. It, in the crowd, there were known to be three, there were three known criminals on, the, on that block in Bristol that, that were in the crowd who were actually whipping up the crowd. All of this is documented, and so you can see it on video. And I've seen a viral video of There's a preacher a few, a few months ago uh, also uh, preaching, His Bible was taken away. And he and, was yes, uh, accused one of our, and he was another an old, older man. Yes. Defenceless older man defense. bundled into the back of a, of, a, of a van. Don Sherwood, his name is. Go. Yeah. Pastor Ollie Wally. We've got so many of them. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, was, hand and he had no case to answer. He didn't say that, anything homophobic. That's a, this no hate it, speech. And, but the point is, what happens is there's, the, the, there's an accusation. It's, I feel offended. You're homophobic. You're transphobic. You're racist, you're misogynist, whatever it might be, and the police become involved. I mean, sim a little bit, well, a little bit similar to... Not, 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 not in the same league at all. The other, the other day, literally last week, I had a phone in a moment. It was, it was taken from, my, from my, the pocket of my coat. Oh, no. It in, but it was in a moment, and uh, it was caught on security camera, and we, I could track it. And I just... I, I called security and then the, the police just about it because it was, could be tracked. And they said, it's just not worth our time. Oh. So that was the response to me on, on, on that. I, I kind of understood that they would say that. And I, and I kind of... And there are more important things than the loss of my no, phone. I'm but what's, but, what's, but what, was, what is so fascinating... I mean, even today, I've been with someone who was suspended for gross misconduct because she complained about neighbours uh, introducing a transgender story. And somebody reported her... And she was then brought before her school, um, her uh, school disciplinary. What puzzles me, Ella, is that the authorities have got time for all of this. Well, I think it's because like all other crime, I assume, assume it's stopped now. I believe, I believe the murders and <laughs> other attacks are, 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 you know, not going on. Well, it's incredibly easy to police tweets because all you have to do mm. is find the tweet and then penalise the person. I mean, we know in other areas of crime, for example, the horrendous state of affairs when it comes to domestic abuse and the complications that are involved in police getting involved in that and the, dealing with a relationship, dealing with the fallout of a relationship. It's an incredibly difficult situation. The police are notoriously bad at it. But when it comes to, I mean, the, the thing about Ingrid said about being sort of almost ashamed about the, the rise of hate. It's really important to drill down into what this 115,000 cases actually entails. Because when you look at, and um, Spike, Fraser Myers and Spike has done a lot of work on this, when you look at what has been reported as hate crimes or hate incidents, it can be there are examples of someone reporting their neighbour because their dog has... Uh, you know, made a mess in their garden and they've reported it as a hate crime or that someone has is in a, a kind of dispute with their work and has called it a hate crime. So hate crime can become 
anything. It can become ridiculous things, like dogs going to the toilet in your garden, or it can be very extreme things, like someone saying racist things to you. And the nebulous way in which this is reported yeah. means that actually understanding, trying to get a grip on, using hate crime stats to try and grip on the level of hate in a society is impossible because the whole notion of what hate now means has become broadened out.